Just an accident on set, the Sikander who plays the bad guy got caught in his arm and I heard the snap and I was like, ooh. Where your hand breaks in It's the in there. And you, you see it throughout the movie. The hard thing was having to adapt some choreography when I was fresh out of the surgery to become one-handed. That whole kitchen fight. <laughs> okay, my first question is to both of you. What is your favorite revenge movie of all time? Or one of your favorite revenge movies of all time? I got one in my head, but you go. I got one in my head. I, what are you gonna go all right, uh, I'm going to say Clint Eastwood's oh. Unforgiven. The Unforgiven. Yeah. Um, you got a backup? Do I have a backup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I need a well, monkey no, no, man? No, no. Is, that, is that what you're fishing <laughs> no, for? No, 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 no. Besides, there's so many man. good Besides. ones. So I was like, okay, it's great that you went for one. I Clint, went for Clint, one. I mean, Clint's pretty solid. I was gonna say Old Boy, but I'm not. I'm gonna say favorite revenge film is probably gonna be either Man from Nowhere. No, no, I saw the Devil. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hard one. Yeah. It's intense. Yeah. Two of And, my favorite action mm -hmm. stars in that. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose a revenge story for your first movie? I think it's like, it's kind of for me like some of the best cinema, like being able to go into, you know, a, a dark room with a bunch of, you know, strangers and experience this kind of feeling of catharsis and live out an emotion that you cannot, you know, truly kind of inflict in reality unless, you know, you're a psychopath. I think revenge at its core is, is a really satisfying form of cinema, you know? And for me, it's, you know, this is a film about how, it's not just revenge, it's about justice in a world where justice is only for the privileged. <laughs> it's a good point. Was that, how was that? Was that, that was good? good. Okay. That was good. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> But I, I don't quite get it. Can you give us a brief, a short summary? What happens? You shoot the movie in 2021 on this island under yeah. COVID circumstances. But what happened next after or before Jordan Peele stepped in and Universal stepped in? You, sh you, you finished the movie. Yeah. And I quite don't understand for who did you the movie or for who, yeah. which company did you the movie? The company was uh, <laughs> Netflix. Um, it, was, it, was, it was Netflix. And then basically... Um, You know, it, they were actually very great. We had, we had a great time. The film, you know, let's just say it doesn't hold back on any punches, both physically and emotionally and socially. And, it, you know, for me, the film's a sort of Trojan horse of an action film. We're using that to try and talk about deeper issues, violence against women, police brutality, you know, the caste system, you know, religion. I mean, the list goes on. For, for me, it's all, all in there. And I, and, and I, you know, I didn't want to pull any of those punches. And so we, we friend, in a friendly manner, parted ways. And I was, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen to this film. And then Jordan saw it. And, you know, he is, when you think of an individual who uses a genre to talk about something far richer and far deeper, you know, immediately he saw this and was like, you know, I know what you're trying to do and he took me under his wing in the film and um, kind of gave it a, a second chance and I, I mean a better chance to be honest we're in the cinemas now because of him yeah this is something I want to know what did you saw in the movie when you saw it for the first time well, and what did you make you say oh this picture needs to be on the big screen I saw um, I saw the same thing you you saw <laughs> honestly, which was um, you know evident even in this cut that Dev showed me, which I think was probably like 90% percent of of what is here. But it, it was quite clear that the the work um, the the performance uh, from a, a, an acting perspective, but also from an action acting perspective, was exceptional. And um, the directing, the moment to moment, Dev really did captured this um this thing and this ability to get the audience on board with um the cinematic moments of the movie but in a greater way the emotional journey of the character so i was just engrossed with the story and yeah he came to me i think in the same state that i've been in many times that any director's been in which is basically on the brink of defeat and he's and He and, and we kind of commiserated. <laughs> we, just, we shared some war stories, and that was like, 
the beginning of our friendship. And do you have a favorite scene in the movie? You know, I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it in an action regard. Okay, so I love the firework scene. There's a scene where he's <laughs> going through the club fighting, <laughs> and Dev has this just incredible. Um, Uh, physicality. It's brutal. He's throwing his long limbs into this thing, but it's also just very beautiful. And he's got these... Fast you know, and loose, baby. <laughs> fast and loose. And he's got these fireworks he's fighting with. And the, the choice of music in this moment is just um, gorgeous. And it slows the whole thing down. And, and uh, it's mm. I iconic. I like the Bonnie M sequence. It's <laughs> one of my favorite lift sequences in this year now. Yeah, uh, well... I don't know... Uh, did you see the movie Farang or Mayhem? It's called internationally. Mayhem. It's a French movie from Xavier Gons, who also made Gangs of London mm. or directed Gangs of London, and he has also a, a, a lift scene, oh, wow. which is very brutal. Is it? You should see it. Yeah, yeah, did he do yeah. it in one take? Yeah, mm, I don't know quite exactly. Yeah. How is this? Yeah, but, but I haven't <laughs> seen that movie. Though. I, I bet it's amazing. Bet it's amazing. <laughs> but speaking about, uh, did he uh, do uh, shoot it in one take? What philosophy did you pursue with your fight scenes? Because when you shoot the movie, the, I would say, John Wick style was already a big theme. And now you have to, yeah, you have really to search for a movie which doesn't do it. And what is your, yeah, what was your aspect of, of action? The initial conversations with Brahim Chaba, fight choreographer, was how do we capture a real sense of desperation? You know, like someone that's like, How can I capture the sense of like a caged, cornered animal that will do anything, spit, bite, scratch, anything uh, to survive, you know? Uh, and there's a word they use in India called jugad, which means um, it, they use it in the slums and stuff. And it's kind of like this street kind of slang of like by any means necessary, like resourceful attitude, you know, like that car's broken, let's jugad it, man. Let's get it started. Let's do this. It's, and for me, it's that kind of nature that went into the filming and the fight style and You know, I always spent a lot of time with the stunt team. There was this guy, Steven, who was using this little Canon camera to shoot some, like, you know, lo-fi pre -visits. And I was like, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to be a DP. I want to operate one day. I spoke to Sharon and I was like, well, here you go. You know, you, you're going to operate these fight scenes. So we literally had a stunt man operating the camera mm -hmm. to get into the crevice of the action under the armpit of it. And we managed to, like, we go from a more cut -y style when he's not, quite prepared to like more balletic like like Jordan said in the fireworks sequence like longer segments so it was during production that you decide that this that the camera is yeah I would say conspicuously close was it by conscious or was it by necessity uh, what to keep the camera like that time yeah the, because I mentioned I, I saw the movie now for two times for oh, the second time okay and I realized oh well, man this camera is Very close. You have so many close-ups, and, and and also in the fight scene, it's very yeah close to the to the combatants. Yeah, I think that's I don't know if that's a rookie mistake or what, but get out of here. I, like <laughs> that's I, awesome. I, yeah, I, for me, I remember the first thing the the financier they were they were like, you need to get get wider shots. Like, why is he so close? But for me, I guess just being an actor or or, or ADHD or like whatever it is. I, I I want you to feel it like I'm feeling it. So when it's when I feel detached or separated from it, I, I, I can't feel the pause or see the glisten in the eye or you know the kind of little tendril of drool connecting the two top layer and bottom layer of teeth or whatever that is. I'm like ah, we're not in it yet. We're not inside it. The the, the feeling of being concussed, you know. So that's just yeah. There is something special, and uh, that that seems to happen when actors are directing themselves in action, where you get an immersiveness, that uh, an understanding in the whole filmmaking process of the the choreography from a, a, a DNA level, and you, yeah, it's 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 wild. I think it's one of the reasons you have this distinct yeah. character in the in the in the. In the action mm -hmm. and sometimes that like, we just couldn't have the location so like there's a stairwell scene where we go into my perspective it wasn't out of choice it was that we, we we couldn't we were trying to build a staircase and we ran out of time and money so we had to use the one outside the production office <laughs> so i was like you know how do we do this we can't physically get the stuntman in and a cameraman so i was like okay the cameraman will become me and then someone will punch the camera 
or, or punch, you know, the point of view and you'll come out into the action. And it's a way to get down the stairs in an interesting way. Was this the most complicated uh, fight or action sequence for you? Or was there oh, no. something more complicated? I mean, the, the, stuff, the stuff with the firework, that was tough. Also, just because we had like three or four breakaway tables. So <laughs> after doing a crazy sequence, I was like, cut. And then we're all on our hands and knees trying to find <laughs> the balsa wood that we're gluing together again for the next takes. <laughs> Um, love, love to hear this. Yeah. Love to hear the <laughs> so, scrappiness. It's this is like for filmmaker. This is like filmmaker. Uh, super low fi uh, stuff in there. Romance uh, novels. <laughs> Just hearing war stories yeah. and, and the scrappiness because it is every every film, you know, worth anything, is you know involves people on their hands and knees picking up pieces of table. <laughs> <laughs> There's a club. <laughs> But if you have been in, involved in the production earlier, what would be your advice for Dev Patel? If only. No, man. Well, I, look, I mean, we, 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 we're at a really good place. So I would be, I would, I would, my fear is that I, I would have somehow led him astray. Mm -hmm. You know, every one of his challenges he and his team overcame And, you know, the challenges and like the, the sort of scrappy um, innovations that like Dev is talking about, that's exactly what makes a movie dope. Um, and so, yeah, you know, in, in retrospect, it's hard to even think about taking away the adversity of his pro process because we've got this crazy, crazy film. That was very nice. He said, taking away the adversity. <laughs> I'm stealing that. <laughs> and then... Why Hanuman? Why the monkey king or the monkey god? You know, he's an interesting iconography. I think there's like iterations of him in a lot of like, you know, you see it in, expressed in like Chinese culture, Indonesian culture even. But, you know, j just as a base like icon, he's so cool. You know, half man, half monkey, incredibly strong superhero that when you kind of dive into the mythology is unaware of his, he loses faith in himself. And that's what I found fascinating. It's not not the other side. The other, there's someone with incredible power and 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 all of these capabilities. He loses faith in himself and has to be reminded of who he is. And that, as a core concept for a hero, is 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 really interesting. And the other god, um, half male, half female. Is it also from the Indian mythology, or was it not from that mythology? But I just doing some research, you know. There's a lot of gods in India. We've <laughs> no. got a whole Rolodex of, uh, of gods. So I found one that is, there's a few actually, but I love the idea that every individual has this duality to them of like, in this case, devotion and destruction, you know, the two Ds. And, and, and it's like, that for me is like, you know, what we're always, you know, kind of fighting with the two poles of oneself. Speaking about destruction. You destruct, uh, you, you destroyed your hand, yeah. I guess. Uh, why? Well, how, how did this did, did Just an accident on set. Uh, you know, the Sikander who plays the bad guy, he's a big dude. He's a big guy and it got caught in his arm and I heard the snap and I was like, ooh. But there's so much adrenaline. So I, I think we carried on until it just really inflated, but we finished the rest of the day, got a screw in it and then carried on filming. Is that shot? where your hand breaks in it's the in there and you, you see it throughout the movie I kind of use it in scenes and we had, the hard thing was having to adapt some choreography when I was fresh out of the surgery to become one handed that whole kitchen fight Yeah, I was way quicker in the stunt room with two hands so doing it with one hand was annoying but you don't you don't see it yeah. you don't see it okay a tricky one for the last question what is your favorite film of of each other well I've done one so it's So he no, doesn't have a lot to uh, choose from. <laughs> I don't care about acting or directing. Ah. Well, you know, I'm, I, I have to say it. I, I do favor Monkey Man. Um, I, think, I think he's, uh, you know, that Dev, he went off simply. And what, what I'm, I'm thrilled to see is that this is a situation where, I mean, this guy's worked with some of the greatest directors of the modern era. And I feel like... Dev has been paying attention to every part of the process since the beginning of his career. That's, that's clear. Whether he knew he was prepping for this or not, he was prepping for this. And so uh, that, that's meaningful to me. Um, and I love Lion. 
Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, wow. I, dude, this is hard. This is ver- I mean, this is hard. I'm going to anger a lot of people because of the sheer amount of fan base this man has. It's, the, the obvious one is Get Out, for, for not only because it's a cinematic achievement and then some, and, you know, it changed the kind of cultural paradigm. Also to see, you know, the rise of Daniel Kaluuya by this man. That was cool. But then... You know, there's some imagery, you know, in us, you know, I, I told you about it, just that shot of the kid dropping the candy apple and the, mm. that cut and that whole beginning sequence, Lupita, I could watch her paint a wall. She, <laughs> she's so, that duality, those those mm. roles. Then Nope is, there's some imagery in that, just, um, see, I'm saying too many, right? So that's- Way too many, but, too many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. I, you know, and this oh, yeah, is like, sorry. this is the, the challenge that you're going to have is like, how do you beat Monkey Man? How can you- <laughs> And yeah. rom com. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to. You know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, man. <laughs>